Good afternoon, Ian Maddox connecting with you on our HMFP Financial Planning Simplified video, part two of our series on Roth IRAs. Glad to connect with you guys. As always, if you have questions that we can be of help with, reach out to us, click on the links, uh, track us down on the web, hmfp.us, or give us a ring. You can uh, reach out to us in any way that is convenient to you. So let's dig in. Last week, we defined what a Roth was. We talked a little bit about the basics of contribution, who, what, where, why, all the W's. And at the end, I talked about some income limitations that would prohibit you from accessing a Roth. So here are some ways that if you happen to be blessed with a higher income and would like to still get some of the benefits of a Roth IRA, here are a couple of ways that you can do it. Uh, first of all, and this has been around for a long time, is uh, the idea of a Roth conversion. It used to be, there was uh, actually a few extra rules. I won't go into all those today. There used to be some uh, limitations, but um, now there is no income limitation at all to a conversion uh, whatsoever. So you can convert, basically taking a traditional IRA and converting part of those assets into a Roth. Now just keep in mind, when you do that, Right? We talked about what a traditional IRA is like. If you take money out of a traditional IRA, you got to pay taxes. So if you're going to convert traditional to Roth, you have to be prepared to pay the taxes. Okay, So just keep that in mind. You might say, well, why would I want to do that? Well, there's a lot of reasons you might want to do that. We can't possibly get into every single person's individual financial planning situation, but the idea generally is that because the Roth grows tax deferred, because it grows uh, potentially, uh, excuse me, because it can potentially be distributed tax free, there might be some uh, long term planning desires that are accomplished better with a Roth than with a traditional IRA. This would be particularly true if you believe that tax rates are going up uh, overall or that you specifically are going to be at a higher tax bracket later in life. But there's other reasons why you might want to do this, which we'll touch on in uh, future sessions. So the conversion is, is one way. Uh, the other way is that we talked about the income limitation on actually contributing to a Roth, right? So if you're uh, at about 135 as an individual filer or 199 as a couple filing, you're just, you're just out of luck. It's SOL, okay? But there's, there's a little bit of a loophole called a backdoor Roth contribution, all right? And there's a couple of different ways you can do this, but I'll make it simple. Let's say you're still working and you are contributing to your 401k. You could make, uh, if your plan allows it, a, a, a uh, after-tax contribution into your 401k, all right? So after-tax, right? After-tax, this is the key. And then subsequently roll that after-tax monies from the 401k directly into a Roth. So follow the stream here. Normally, 401k monies are pre-tax, right? You're making an after-tax contribution into the 401k, which changes the tax treatment, right? You've already paid tax on it. Then you're rolling it, rolling it out of the 401k into a Roth, which gets you around that income limitation. You could make half a million dollars a year, uh, and I've read blog posts of doctors and attorneys that have done this exact thing. Now, you still, as a married couple or as an individual, right, you still have the limitation of how much can go into the Roth, okay? So if you're a married couple over 50, you're talking uh, 17,000, excuse me, uh, 14,000. All right, so each individual can put up to 7,000. 6,000 is the base, 1,000 is a catch-up contribution. If you're 49 or younger, then it's 6,000. So a married couple could put 12,000 in. So that's, that's in a very simple description of backdoor Roth. Again, there's a couple of other ways to do this. Uh, I always tell people you should talk to your financial advisor, uh, tax attorney, uh, accountant, before you do anything like this to make sure you're not uh, shooting yourself in the foot. So uh, anyways, good to connect with you again come back and we'll jump into part three, which is about uh, using Roth for college expenses. Ian Maddox, HMFP, till next time.